Japan just delivered fully performing female robots. Japan has been at the forefront of robotics technology and has amazed the world with its robotic innovation for many years. Seven out of the ten world's leading industrial robotics companies are housed in Japan. Furthermore, it has the highest density of robot workers in the world. Let's look deeper to find their latest advancements in robotics. Uncanny Valley Though proto-robots went out of fashion during Japan's rapid 20th century modernization, the idea of mechanical beings as amusements may have lingered in the national consciousness. When Masahiro Mori, the researcher who coined the term Uncanny Valley, a noted robotics thinker, first started to do research on robots in the 1970s, he found it difficult to be taken seriously. The phrase, which refers to the discomfort we feel when confronted with human-like entities, seemed at odds with Japan's relationship with robots. In those days, people didn't think universities should be doing research on robots, he said. They thought that it was frivolous to be working on a toy. Japan had been forced to demilitarize during the American occupation, and the officially pacifist nation put little effort into using robots as weapons. These factors helped instill a generally positive view of robots in post-war Japan. Industrial automation had provided a major economic boon, and humanoid robots were an innocuous curiosity. The West, meanwhile, tended to take a less sanguine view. The US, preoccupied with the Cold War, poured funding into robotics for military uses, which cast a threatening aura over the field. And workers in the West had long thought of automation as taking men's jobs, since the Luddites destroyed textile machinery in England in the early 19th century. The Manga Superstar these divergent views of technology were revealed in the pop culture of the latter half of the 20th century. One of the most influential Japanese characters of this time was Astro Boy, who was introduced in manga comics in 1952 and went on to appear in books, TV shows, movies, and a wide range of merchandise like action figures and trading cards. Astro Boy was an android who used his superhuman powers for good and rallied the country around a positive message about technology even if he wasn't originally intended that way. According to Astro Boy creator Osamu Tezuka, he had been forced to draw a very optimistic picture of technology by his publishing company and readers in order to give hope to the Japanese, who, in the 1950s, were still suffering of the war destruction and the awareness of their technological inferiority to the Western winners of the war, writes Wagner. Tezuka's message of a critique of human behavior was not understood, Instead, only the friendly character of a robot savior was idealized as hope for the future Japanese society. The message left a powerful mark on a generation of Japanese, particularly those who would go on to make their own androids. Japanese robotics is driven by the Astro Boy dream. If there was no robot fiction, there was no robotics, is a credo of many leading robotics researchers and developers in Japan. The West's sphere of robotics, however, was crystallized most powerfully in the Terminator series, in which the defense computer network Skynet gained self-awareness. Humans tried to shut it off, and Skynet uses androids called Terminators to successfully wage war on them. Many Western works of sci-fi harken back to the same moral warnings from Frankenstein and RUR, the folly of creating artificial life the paradox of whether anything made by humans can have a soul, the impossibility of people coexisting with our most sophisticated creations. The Less Troubled Meanwhile, Japan, less troubled by fears about a robot uprising, is eager to use robots to make up for an acute labor shortage and handle tasks like taking care of the country's fast-growing elderly population. As in the post-war years, the government and businesses are pushing automation to help the economy, contributing to a national enthusiasm for robots. But while Astro Boy helped birth Japan's enthusiasm for the idea of robots, he may have also contributed to the country's ambivalence about them. Rathman says Japanese have Astro Boy syndrome. They tend to imagine humanoid robots as intelligent, flexible, and powerful. Yet so far, real-life robotics has not met their expectations. He says that, based on the technology available now, engineers working on elderly care robots should focus on making simple devices that will integrate smoothly into care facilities rather than on flashy ones that are impressive but expensive and impractical. Ultimately, even Japanese may prefer to have their human needs handled by actual humans. The Question of Humanoids From the beginning of the 20th century, 
Japanese roboticists have observed specific features in the physical designs of humanoid robots that cause users to react with either fear or affection. Analyzing the sources of these reactions, robotics engineers eliminated from robots those features that might trigger negative associations, and instead embedded their designs with cues to norms, theories, and cultural references valued by their society. By analyzing Nishimura Makoto's building of an affable artificial human named Gakuten Soku, Mori Masahiro's discovery of the phenomenon of the Uncanny Valley, and Ishiguro Hiroshi's current employment of cognitive, social, and psychological sciences to overcome the uncanny impression of his robots, the development of the field of humanoid robotics in Japan was driven by concern with human emotions and cognition and shaped by Japanese roboticists' own associations with the social and intellectual environments of their time, hence why Japan is still leading the humanoid robotics industry. Interactions with Leading Japanese Humanoids Junko Chihira Meet Junko Chihira. She's a 165cm tall or 5'5'-inch android designed to resemble a 26-year-old Japanese woman. Junko made her public debut at a shopping center in Tokyo in October, where she greeted customers in Japanese, English, and Chinese. She's also the poster child for Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe's Robot Revolution Initiative. The five-year plan, backed by a combination of 200 corporate entities and universities, seeks to increase the usage of robots in manufacturing, construction, healthcare, hospitality, and other sectors. Junko represents the friendly face of the push. Its end goal is to ultimately increase robotic sales, where Junko is expected to provide assistance to foreign visitors. She was built by consumer electronics giant Toshiba in collaboration with the Tokyo Metropolitan Government and Mitsubishi's Property Management Division. The robot doesn't yet walk, but it can use its arms to gesture. It also can't hold a conversation, but a speech recognition update is planned. Actroid DER2 Of the trio of androids presented that year at IREX, Actroid DER2 was easily the most realistic, but still a far cry from being able to trick us into thinking it was human, even from a distance. Many of the Japanese salarymen who passed by while people photographed her actually remarked that she was cute. This is exactly the response that Kokoro, the company that designed her, was aiming for. Kokoro's website describes Actroid DER2 as even cuter than her older sister, a reference to the original Actroid DER. Her most attractive feature is her long legs, the company writes. Her astonishingly small face is capable of creating exotic facial expressions. Her girlish and cute gestures are also polished. Actroid DER2 was designed to be a robotic greeter at stores and events. Kokoro even goes as far as describing its lineup of androids as being suited for the job of Booth Bunny, what some might consider a derogatory term for the female models used for promotion at tech, gaming, and automotive expos. As is the case with Junko, Actroid DER2 seems to have little functionality beyond greeting people and making basic facial expressions and hand gestures. Telenoid So, uh, this is Telenoid. Irex was the first time that people were able to see it in all its nightmare-inducing glory. It's a lot more terrifying when you see it wriggling about, and even more so when you hear the strange infant-like coos and giggles that periodically burst out of its mouth. Instead of cute, passing attendees naturally described Telenoid as scary and weird. One woman also very awkwardly volunteered to hold the robot. It's meant to be held by users, particularly elderly folks who live alone, to give them a semblance of physical human contact. It can also be hooked up to a computer and used as a communication device. Think Skype, but your words come out of Telenoid instead of your laptop speaker. More than just talking through the robot, a sensor array allows it to mimic a speaker's facial expressions and head nods. Yes, it's got bizarre design language, but Telenoid actually does a lot more than the other two. That's all for today, folks. See you another time.